This is Al Grease from Grease Films, and you're watching Barber World TV. It's your boss, International Zoe. We're here in Rio de Janeiro, Copacabana Beach. It's my pleasure to sit down with Al Grease of Grease Films. He's the producer and director of Frustrated. One, two, and now three is coming. Where are you from? Uh, born and raised in the Bronx, Bronx, New York. Uh, left, left that area around 11, 12 years old. Went to high school up upstate New York in Amherst, Amherst, New York. Went, to, uh, went there and uh, had a short stint in Arizona, trying to play ball in Arizona. Football. 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 Okay. What position you play? Fullback. Fullback. Okay. Fullback and the linebacker. I was too short to be a linebacker. <laughs> Nobody looking for no 5'9 linebacker, 5'10. You know, they say, yeah, you use your ass as a ram, as a battery ram. <laughs> Shit, <and> fullback. <laughs> So, so you're a tough guy, you know what I mean? No, no, I mean, man, no, nah. physically, if you play football, you got to have, you got to be tough mentally. Yeah. Not just physically, but mentally. Well, football taught me a, a lot of things, man. Uh, number one, if you get beat on the first play, it ain't over. You don't have to continue to get beat. You have to make adjustments on the fly. And that helps with filming. You got to learn how to make adjustments on the fly, especially when you're independent. You got to make adjustments on the fly. So if the dude's getting the inside on you and you keep missing the block, you know, you got to make that adjustment on the fly. If you can't adjust, that's when dudes start getting pulled, when they start getting beat because you're hurting us now. Right. You got to make, so maybe you have to slow up. Off, off the snap, you don't have to fly out there because he's swimming over you, he's beating you. Or your head is down. Right. Technique is wrong. Keep your head up. See the target. Explode through the target. Right. Take your time. Sometimes you got to, even though you watch, uh, you know, the, the game is fast, especially from a uh, pro level. You see right. it's go, it moves fast. Yes. But uh, if your technique is off and you're flawed, you get exposed. Right. And now how can you make that adjustment? How can you make that adjustment so I can help the greater good of everybody? How can I help my team? Right. I'm hurting my team. So you got to make those adjustments. You got to make those on the fly. So that um, helped, you, um, helped you in life. Oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> and yeah. And in film. Yeah, yeah. Because, well, well, it helped me deal with rejection. Seriously, it helped me deal with rejection, and especially then you learn uh, the, the lower probabilities and all that shit. Right. So once you learn all that shit, and then you, okay, I, I screwed up this play, but it ain't over. Right. And then life, you know, shit, I'm in my 20s, life ain't over. Right. You so get, get knocked down, get back up. Get, yeah, get back up, and let's get ready for the next play. Right. Get right. ready for the next play. So where did you go to college, and what did you go to college for? I was a... Um, I wanted to be in finance. Finance. I wanted. I, I wanted to be in finance. Uh, uh, I wanted to be the Wall Street dude. <laughs> I, that's, a, I, that's what I really wanted. Wanted to be like the Wolf of Wall Street. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to be one of the Wall Street dudes and shit, man. And uh, and uh, knew where I was at in life. How hard you have to work to get that in there. So I was a finance major. I, I started off being a finance major, and. This is what I learned at college, when I went to school out in Arizona, they, uh, my coach called me in the office. You know, and I went to a uh, very upscale high school in Amherst. Mm -hmm. My school, my high school looked like a college. And he was like, uh, he called me in the office, he was like, how you doing, have a seat, sit down, you know, you're a little bit too ambitious. So I was like, what you mean, coach? Put, let's, get the strap, let's get the pads on, we're gonna, we gonna get it in. He's like, right. no, 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 you got my schedule, you like, your schedule up here. I need you to be down here. You up here, you need to be down here. So I'm like, what you, what you talking about? He was like, man, I'm looking at you, you ain't gonna be able to handle that. You ain't gonna be able to handle that, man. I got a revised schedule for you, check this one out. And that shit basket weaving, <laughs> advanced speaking, all that bullshit, <laughs> all that bullshit. I'm like, you check my SAT scores, you, know, you see my transcript, you know, I, I, shit, I'm better than that. He's like, no, 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 we want you, we want you here. I right. want you over fucking with this shit. So he wants you to focus on football. football but and not on being education. realistic, I ain't no 5'10, 5'10, 4. I had, I was just glad to have the experience. I ain't going to no Pro Bowl. Right. I, you know, I, I'm not going to the pros. He was thinking about his so, But if you're going to have me out here for free, I should take advantage of the education you offer. That's right. And they was like, that's where the first conflict came with them. They was like, you over here, we want you over here. Mm. So I was like, fuck, fuck that, I'm gonna be over here, damn that. Right. You're paying for it, I'm over here. Right. I'm over here, and uh, you know, in the, it took it took some, uh, 
uh, major adjustments in, in my studying and all that shit, and they didn't, they weren't happy with that. Mm. So they penalized me that on the field. Ah, uh, they give you the playing time. And stuff. Yeah, well, yeah, you put you on special team and all that right. shit. Since you want to be, in, you want to be an academic and shit. Go over right. there, then. Right. You know, we need guys. It's like, what the fuck you mean? I'm one of these guys, dog. I could, I could, I could do more than one thing. Right. But that was my experience there. So I left there, and, and my, my brother, my older brother, bought a house in Atlanta. He was like, yo, don't, you ain't got to go to New York. You come, you come to Atlanta. And what year was this when you moved to Atlanta? Oh, man. Uh, 90, 95? 95, okay. 95, just before the Olympics in 96. Okay. Went out there, and, um, you know, uh, I, wanted to play, I wanted to play ball for Morris Brown. So I reached out to the coach, and he was like, well, can't offer you a scholarship. You can come and walk on. But when I went to go register, I was considered an out-of-state student. Wow. And, and I'm feeding the fuck that. <laughs> I told you, listen, what I'm going to do is I'm a, I got a job working at the health club so I can work out for free. Okay. So I said, yo, listen, uh, I'll come in, I'll, you know, I'll come in and try, you know, come in August and all this stuff. I sent some game films. All right, we'll come out, come on out. So, man, and, you know, moving to Atlanta, all them beautiful sisters out there. <laughs> You know, that's you went when, at a good time too. Yeah, that's when they still had Georgia peaches. Right. Now they Georgia plums. Yeah. They, they plums out there. They ain't no more peaches and shit. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I was there where they had peaches. Mm. And man, I got introduced to that shit, man, and uh, messed with cool brothers that I'm still friends with to this day. Right. And man, it was ripping and running. My brother was like, man, I, you know, what you doing, dog? You, you know, you partied and. I was sleeping in my car and shit. I had to get to work and and uh, was burning the candles. Right. He's like, dude, you know, you fucking up, man. You got, you know, you got to hit. You got stay on your, stay on your game, man. Stay on your game. Right. And uh, the coach called me. Are you ready? I said, look, coach, I ain't gonna even waste your time, man. Right. Right. <laughs> I, ain't gonna, right. I ain't gonna. I ain't gonna waste your time, right. man. Right. Right. I'm. I, 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 I ain't, I ain't did no My running. My priorities have changed. Yeah, I fucked up, man. And then that which led me on the road with dating out there, man. Um, it was it was a shock because they was running uh, them girls out there running that country backdoor game on you. <laughs> New York game is different. We kind of straightforward. You straightforward. They it, played you with the country dumb. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Going through the back door over this shit. I, I couldn't figure this shit out. I kept, I kept getting beat. Like what the fuck? What you know? What's going on? They beating you. I said, damn, man. And um, my brother, older bro my older brother, man, I, I stayed with, man, he was in the Navy, so he traveled the world, so he had more experience than I did. Mm -hmm. And he, he he kept schooling me, man. You know, you cut this out, man, cut this out. And me being hard-headed at the time, mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I'm my own, man. I'll figure shit out on my own and right. not taking advantage of the resources I had in front of me, until, you know, until yeah, a little bit later. Young. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I'm in a new town and shit, feeling myself. and. Got sports cars, whips and shit, can't tell me nothing. Right. And then, you know, that was like the golden age of hip hop and all that shit was yes. out there. And yes. I'm moving and moving and moving and not focusing. Right. I'm not focused. I got distracted. And then um, I had an opportunity to go to Alaska. Right. I had an opportunity to go work in Alaska. And it was a great deal in finance where I wanted to be at. And I took it. In fact, I told my brother, I'm out, I'm going to Alaska, stayed there for a year. And that's where I learned um, um, screen, screenwriting. 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 Janet Burke, and one of the one of the clients I had, she had, you know, she was in a car accident. Asked me to come to our house, drop some papers off, and I saw that all these scripts and shit in the house from TriStar Pictures. And she told me I read scripts for them. And I said I was interested in writing them. She was like, "Well, shit, go go get this, go get this, go get this, go get this, go get this. Come to my house, and you get this done and shit." And I was like. You know, she, her husband there, that little girl and shit, he don't want me spending all this time with his wife. You know, you know what I mean? Like, how he gonna take this? Right. You know, me spending time with his wife in his house and he ain't there. Right. You know what I mean? And, and you know, this, this was this was a white woman and shit, right. too. And I would come over and shit, man, and, and she would teach me and he would call, like, yo, he, Al over there, he asked me he wants something to eat. I'm gonna bring some yeah. food home. I know y'all working. And um, that's what difference of having a great relationship. Yeah, and, and she trust. Didn't, didn't charge me a dime. Right. Didn't charge me a dime. All she told me was if anybody ever asked you how to write a screenplay, you get that information on it. Right. And I had people who came and asked Pay me. Pay it forward. And I did. Right. I did. And, and, and she taught me the ropes, and, and uh, I wrote a screenplay. I was excited. I was like, oh, shit, I got it. 
She said, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> let me, let me, let, you got it written. So she let, read it, and what was, what did she think? I mean, because that's what she did for a, a living. Uh, the first, when at first uh, I thought I was done with it, she made me go back and rewrite it. Right. And, and what she told me was every third scene got a pop. Got a uh, pop. You need something pop. Like a lyric where you yeah, got to oh, drop oh, a punch drag, It just drags on. Every third scene. scene got to pop. Got to have something Got to pop. Interesting. You got to have something. Something okay. happen. Right. You don't have, it could be big or small, but something has to change the projection of the film, which way the film is going. Right. And right now, you just, you're dragging too, it's just dragging. It's not, that, a, it's not an easy read. And that makes me think sometimes, like, I've seen some filmmakers make it pop like every other joint, mm -hmm. which seems like overkill sometimes, yeah. but they trying to get a reaction. So when you said every third scene got a pop, that, you know, this, just you tell, talking to me is putting things in perspective that most people watch and take for granted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every third scene got, believe it or not, from Frustrated was biggest response I got from that film, when I wanted to transition from the States coming here, when I had the airplane take it off, Brothers told me I got chills watching that shit. When that motherfucker airplane took off, I got chills from watching that. Wow. Just from that scene, and the dudes was like, oh, and then you showed, you know, you came in and I started through the B-roll, all that right. stuff there. But every third scene, she said, you gotta pop. Okay. Here, take it back, make it pop. Right, right. Just damn, how I'm gonna make it pop? <laughs> you know what I mean? What you, what, like, what's the pop? What do you mean? Right. Every third scene, something, something drastic, or not that so, so much drastic, but something gotta happen. Right. So I like went back and I, you almost got it, you almost got it. I'm feeling you now, take it back. And this was, it, this is not me showing up the next day. I would show up a month later. Right, you was uh, putting two, work in. Two months later and shit, right. I, I was hooked. Right. I would go for work, go right there, had my own little office, I'd there, boom, go home and be, ah, ah, ah. I had to buy this, the, 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 uh, the software. The template. It, 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 yeah, it was, it was called uh, scriptware. Scriptware. Yeah, it's called, it's called scriptware. I had to buy the scriptware. Bought all that shit. It helps you format shit. Right. So it's easy to go back and change some shit. Right. It's not like you gotta ball up a piece of paper yeah. and shit. It's not and go like back the days of us typing yeah. with the typewriter. Went through that shit, man. Mm -hmm. And um, finally, I, I, I brought it back to her. She said, Nah, you. She read it. She read it. She called me. Nah, you got it. Mm. Nah, you got it. I could follow the story. I could follow this. Right. Now you ready? Come back to the house. Came back to the house, and then she had all like all the tools and shit I needed from her. the Hollywood Creative Directory book. Mm -hmm. uh, had to get in touch with uh, the Writers Guild because they had to go copyright that right. shit. So that's what was going out Guild. there. I went out there, had, had the shit copyright through there, and, and trying to get in the union as a writer. They don't charge until you sell your first shit. Okay. You, you know, you, they don't. They don't you, could, you could submit it there to the library, but once you sell your first shit, you hit them back. And then pay you, your dues. You pay your dues, and right. then they, they put you in. And, and then I saw the pay scale, like from what directors make per hour, with, with the uh, with directors make per hour, writers and and uh, producers and all that shit. I got really excited because you was on the the top pace part part of the page. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> what they call they call the opening credit. So who gets the least amount of money? The actors and the and, and uh, you know. No, it depends on what actor you use. Oh, that's true. It depends on, so if you, you bring in a big name, you know, big names come with, you know, 20, yeah. $25 million budget. Yeah. yeah. So, I, I mean, you, you, you know, we, we, we always use Denzel as a reference. Yeah. They're going to go see Denzel. Everybody's going to see Denzel. So, you, yeah. Denzel want to be a part Denzel, of it. Denzel, Will Smith, certain people. 20, you're talking 20, 20 25, million, 25 20 million. 20 million plus. Now, if I take a B-roll actor, B-roll actor, you seen him in a little bit of shit, but right. I told him, listen, I'm gonna put you in the star on role. I'm about to make you. Right. I'm not gonna pay you and make you. Right. I'm not gonna do both. It's up to you. I'm gonna put some money in your pocket. Right. But I'm not gonna make you and pay you. And pay you. It's so, an opportunity. Right. So you you know, you look at the script and some of them just cause you'll see a lot of actors take uh take on lesser pro projects because of the substance of the film. Right. No, they, they, they may win an a, a Oscar, right. they may win awards from that shit, right. which is going to prepare Just them. Just be recognized. Yeah, they, they, a, they can get out of something right. and, and usually take on a, a take on a character or something like that. Mm -hmm. So did that with the Hollywood man and, and used my, used my uh, New York street game, knocking on doors, getting the doors and shit. And um, I was really on Babyface at the time, because Babyface okay. had this soul food. 
And he, he was telling black stories. Yeah. So and he did that, the half plenty and had this. Everything uh, they was doing for a while was, was yeah. cracking. Yeah, it was cracking. So I was like, man, he, he the dude. Right. He the dude. What was the script about? Uh, Taking me back now. <laughs> <laughs> they gonna want to know. Basically, man, uh, it was it's about two, two, uh, two, two, uh, two brothers that grew up in, 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 in an impoverished neighborhood and were determined to, to work out of it. One took the short route, one took the long route. And towards the end of the film, uh, they was main friends and shit, but just the obstacles along the way. And one was determined and, 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 and had uh, to, to a point where he didn't care what he did. Right. What he did, even though he was successful in life, he, 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 in the story, he wound up being a lawyer. Mm -hmm. Being a lawyer, but lawyers still wasn't good enough for him, so he started you know, dealing with people and all that shit there. Right. They helped get through the scene. The other one took his time, but he made it there. And then when it all fell out, his man got, man got, but the other dude went back and got him up. But got there was some tragic stuff along the way through okay. the lines and stuff. For, it was a cool little, cool, I thought it was a cool little flick, man. What was the name of it? Wow. <laughs> you taking me back, man. <laughs> It'll come to me, man. Okay. So don't don't get shocked when it's like, yo, that's what it yeah. was. And shit. That's okay, what it so was. You, you hit, you, you fly out to Hollywood with yeah. no appointments or nothing. No appointments. And you start knocking on doors. No hotel room, no okay. rest. Where did you get some doors open how did it go well you, you gotta hollywood is full of rejection it's full of rejection you don't look the part you, know, you ain't the part you so it's full of that so i already i was prepared for that shit so how i'm gonna get around that how i'm gonna get around that now i had the uh, hollywood creative directory book so i just start calling get my name out there tell me i'll grease i i called uh, russell simmons joint Kareem Abdul Jabbar had, had had a production company. <laughs> Tell him I agree. Uh, and, uh, One of the just best filmmakers out of New York, in <laughs> town. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just throwing names out there. Just get my name here. Let them hear my name. Right. So when I I did that before I went. So when I popped up, I was heavy on Babyface. Right. So what I did on purpose was I kept calling his music, the his uh, music the music company. company. Okay. Which was in um, Beverly Hills. Right. That was LaFace? LaFace Records, because okay. out Beverly Hills, I kept, Al Grease is coming, Al Grease is coming, they were like, who the fuck is Al Grease and why is he coming here? You right. know what I mean? Right. So when I showed up, because I knew he had, uh, I didn't know where the location was, but I knew he had uh, a production company, because from the films it said he was getting, right. so it had to be separate. Right. So I went to the, I said, yeah, Al Grease is here, so the lady called, we got Al Grease there, she said, uh, I t uh, we don't deal with film here. You know, we do music, we do film here. I said, oh, I'm sorry, I got the wrong info, the contact. Can you do me a favor? Just call down there and let them know I'm coming because I got to get another flight out of here. I'm leaving Atlanta, and I told them I was going to drop this, the screenplay off. Right. So can you call down and just let them know I'm coming, please? And she right. was like, hold on one second. OK, Grease, they're waiting. That's how I got in the door. <laughs> so when I went to Hollywood, he was right off of Hollywood Boulevard. When I went over there, and you know, you got to get stopped. Be like, Hello, who are you? I'm Al Grease. I'm, I'm, I think she gave me the chick name. And she, I'm here, here, seeing so and so. Yeah, hold on. Okay, yeah, you can go up. Right. And I was like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's game one on one. Don't yeah. take no for an answer. That's, Got in the building. Right. I saw uh, they had like Tatiana Ali, Fresh Prince, all these little young actors. They was reading for some part. I walked in the wrong door, and she's like, "Can I help you?" I said, "Oh, I agree." She's like, "Oh, oh, how you doing? I agree. You're on the other side. Like they knew me and shit." So they were like, like "Yeah." And, and, and Babyface had, yes. <laughs> Fine women walking up in there, man. I got speechless, man. Wow. Chick was talking to me, man. She was so damn fine. I was like, God damn, baby face. Yeah. And uh, I got to the script, man, and, I, and um, I wound up getting a response from him, too. And that's why I realized he was, baby face was buying films. He was going to yeah. film festivals and buying films mm -hmm. that was already done. Or, 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 or being in production with already right. done. So I was like, oh, okay, because he sent me a he sent me the, he sent me the screenplay back. They signed off and told me it was an easy read, great screenplay. But right now he wasn't in a position to take on the product. Okay. You know, but he wished me the best of luck and all that shit, man. I wish I would have saved that letter. He sent me a nice little letter, man, right. back with the screenplay, and I was like, wow. So I knew I was on to something. Okay. And that's when it hit me. I was laying in the hotel room. Uh, before that happened, I was laying in the hotel room, and it was like, you think you did something? 
Yeah. You're knocking on a few doors. You think he did something because you maneuvering out here now. Right. Anybody call you back? I'm like, man, just chill, man. It's just the whole little process. Why like, right, you going to chill? Go ahead, chill. And I'm running around there going to the Chinese man theater and shit, looking around, getting the vibe, sucking all that shit in. And, right. And um, still, my conscience kept fucking with me. Ain't nobody call you back, man. Phone ain't ringing. What's going on with you, Grease? I was like, shit, man, just, just chill. Just chill, man. <laughs> so, man, fuck that, man. Once you, once you, once you go make them. Right. So, man, I don't know how to make no fucking movie. Well, you didn't know how to write them either. Right. A couple months ago, you didn't right. know how to write one. Yeah, let's go, let's, let's go make them. You can so, make them. So your conscience pushed you. My conscience was talking to me. And I'm not a religious dude. Right. I'm not a religious dude. This, I'm not a religious dude at all, man. And, and my conscience kept pick, uh, pushing me. And right after that, my man called me. Who, uh, my man Mike Eubank, shout out to Mike. And uh, he was like, yo, you should go check out the Hollywood Film, film Creative. Uh, they got a spot right over there. And he sent me the, t the address. And I had to rent a car, went over there, checked it out. And I was like, I can't stay out here. And he was like, man, we, we do it in, um, these are the cities we at right. that we teach film and stuff. And I signed up for it, man, and um, took the course, took the stuff out, and uh, they had the stuff out in, um, in D.C. D.C. In D.C., the American University. And I, I went over there. How did you fund that? Oh, man, it, you know, it, it's, it was crazy, man, because when I came back from Alaska and I came back, I went back to Atlanta. And, and I was on a high, natural high. I'm like, damn, I'm going I'm to I'm get this because I spent some bread. I had some bread saved up from the money I was making out there. Mm -hmm. And my man, my big, my man hit me up. I played high school ball with and stuff. Right. He was doing very well for his stuff at the time. He hit me up, man. Like, dad, dog, you all over the goddamn place. You all right? You good? I'm like, yeah, man, I'm, I'm about to jump in this film game and all that shit. He was like, what? So, yeah, man, I'm just trying to figure out some stuff, man. I see the course and stuff, man. Uh, um, going out to... Um, DC and all that stuff. Cause my man went to school out there. Okay. He went to school out. He went to school out in Baltimore too. So he was like, man, well, but shit, you know, I, I got some people out there that are gonna look out for you. And uh, my man Jerry Willer, shout out to Big Jerry. Jerry Willer came out, took out for me. He said, what you need, man? I said, man, I need a couple of dollars of bread. Shit, sent me the bread. Man, just go handle your business. Just, just, just tell me you're gonna go handle your business. Send me the bread. I went to school out there. Came back. I was psyched, ready to roll. How long was the school? Schools, uh, I took different parts of the course, so it took about a year. A year, okay. Yeah. A year, though, a year of school. So, so you go from seeing, going, being in someone's house, they introduce you to screenwriting, writing, rewriting, and getting the product, trying to shop the product, from, from trying to shop the product and decide I'll make my own films and then go on to school. That's a whole lot of dedication. Yeah. How, how many years did it take for you to get to that point? Roughly. Go well, from from um, from learning how to write and and, 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 and and actually finishing up the film school and, and running over there and going to Atlanta and all that stuff was like within a year. Yeah. A year and a half to so sit you, out there for you, a year. You did a crash course of yeah, everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was I was just I, I was like that when you inspired. Yeah, I was just moving. Right. I was just moving and I and I had the belief I had I can do it. And what year was this that all of that happened? Oh man, we're talking maybe two thousand early two thousands. Early two thousands, okay. Early two thousand. So you finished school. I go back to um, go back. I go back to Atlanta. Okay. I go back to Atlanta. I met. I, I ran across. Ran across a dude who said, you know, just from from having a, a conversation, sitting at a bar drinking, and we got to talking and shit, and told him I wanted to do. He was interested in, in the product and all that stuff, and we was chopping it up. But you know, when it came time to release the check, he, he could still kept bumping his gums and shit, right. man. I, I need the check, dog. <laughs> like my man said, anybody see the check, dog? Exactly. <laughs> anybody see the check? <laughs> you got the check, dog. Right. And I was, this dude wasting my time and shit, man. And I bounced right. and cut cut him loose over there. And uh, my grandmother had passed away. And uh, I was kind of I was disappointed because I wanted to see my grandmother. I wanted my grandmother to see that I did something, that I made something. But my grandmother was behind me all the way. Right. And I went back to New York, and I wound up staying in New York after okay. she passed. And still wasn't thinking about film. Still wasn't thinking about film, and started, um, just got a job working in um, Gourmet Foods, and uh, went back to the gym, was working out, and, and um, making films was 
I had lost the, the passion. Wow. Okay. I lost the passion. Wow. And um, I, uh, uh, my man, um, I call him Boozy. I call him Boozy. And uh, came in the gym. He, he had a motorcycle accident. And he was like, he saw me working out. He'd been watching me and shit. He was like, yo, can I work out with you? I was like, yo, listen, man. The reason I go to the gym, man, I, I put headphones in. I had my workout already planned. I'm in and out. Right. I'm in and out. He was like, man, you know, I just had a motorcycle accident. I don't have no health insurance. And I need to rehab. So this was cheaper. Right. For me to pay them, you know, paying them. I just need a little help, bro. And I was like, fuck it. You know, I, I work out Monday through Friday, Saturday. I do some cardio. I go to the track. You can do that on your own. If you need to know what to do. Right. But you, come on in, man. And uh, usually I work out about six weeks hard, and then I take take time off to heal, rest. Right. And during that part, he told me, man, um, what you doing, man? I said, man, I, I want to take off somewhere. I went to, I went, I, I been to DR last time, and, and DR didn't do, didn't do it for me. I didn't like the infrastructure. Right. I ain't like the infrastructure, and I'm being from New York. That shit looked like New York. <laughs> you know what I mean? I need to get away. I, I want to get away from all that shit. Right. So he was like, "Man, go to um, go to Brazil." I'm like, "Yo, that's what's up. That's what's up." I mean, look into it. He's like, "Yo, I know a dude out there, John Thompson. He went apartments. He hooked up with a, he hooked up with some, with apartments and stuff, man. Give it the day." He said, "I said, yo, you been out there? He said, man, I had a ball out there. I'm telling you, you gonna you gonna have some fun." Right. So I came out here. Got hooked up and uh, had, 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 had the time of my life. And what year was this, your first time coming up? It was like 2004. 2004, okay. Yeah, like 2004. Come here and what's your what's your first impression? What are you thinking? Man, I was a like kid in the candy store, man. I was, I was, you know how these good badass kids be running around, can't stop? That was me. That was me. I was running around, couldn't stop, man. I couldn't believe how beautiful, number one, the city, the city is because, because you hear it's, Brazil's a third world country. And I couldn't believe how beautiful the women were, how feminine the women are, and how friendly they were. Right. And I was like, wow. I'm across the street from the beach. In New York, you want to go to the beach, you got to pay for parking. Yeah. Long as line, the beach is accessible. You go right across the street. And uh, the shit was like, I was I was like head down, couldn't stop running. This was a, the time of club help. Oh, Club I, Help, I, yeah. I yeah. only heard about That's it. That's the greatest, know? listen, them closing that shit was the greatest travesty known to mankind. <laughs> it's the greatest travesty of mankind. <laughs> they closed the Club Help. What did it look like in there? What went on in there? Damn, where we at now? You, it's, it's, it's the Agnew over there, that, that monstrosity. That, that, yeah. that, that, that's that shit there. And it had three stories. It was packed. No bullshit, man. When they closed that club, they, probably, they took out easily. 20 to 30 million dollars out there economy. Wow. Just from that one fucking club. Wow. Guys would fly in from, from the airport, taxis, restaurants, hotels, uh, uh, going up to see uh, Sugarloaf Mountain and, and Christ Redeemer, all that shit. So it, 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 that was like the center point of that shit, and that shit was thriving. So you met brothers that would come, come that would come from all over. Right. And um, I was like, Kid in candy store. You know what's crazy? First day here, uh, John Thompson hooked, hooked us up with a beautiful, beautiful apartment, beachfront, each uh, three bedroom. Me and my brother and I bought my little nephew out, which graduated. Right. I'm the youngest out of seven kids and shit. And um, each had their own bathroom.